throughout the long and difficult period of Watergate, I have felt it was my duty to persevere, to make every possible effort to complete the term Doing of office. another one. To which you elected. Um, we're going to talk about Watergate and, and uh, Richard Nixon and uh, see what we can do with that because that's a great thing to be able to write about. Lots of great ideas, scandal and executive power, congressional power, the Constitution, the Supreme Court, um, war. There's tons of stuff in Watergate. So doing it justice in 10 minutes is probably going to be not, not doable and uh, certain people watching this video are going to be disappointed. Um, but for United States History Region students, at least, and a little bit for the AP exam, I guess, um, it, it's important to understand and it's important to know. Um, if you don't, you're going to lose points. There's just no doubt about it. Write it down now. It's true. Um, so let's go over the, the fundamentals of Watergate. Um, first of all, what is Watergate? Watergate is the name we give to the scandal that brought down the President of the United States, Richard Nixon. So let's kind of trace Watergate back to kind of, I guess, where it started. And uh, that's hard to do as a social studies teacher for 11th grade, but we're going to try. Um, Richard Nixon had a lot of secrecy in his administration. Um, one example, and it's on the test, a Supreme Court case, was um, the Pentagon Papers. Um, and, uh, boy, names are escaping me now as I, I search for this man's name in my head. Um, but a gentleman um, was working for the Pentagon, and he discovered that there was these secrets of Vietnam that were kind of in front of him. And uh, this gentleman copied the text and brought it to the New York Times. And I promise you, in the 10 minutes I'm here, the name's going to pop in my head. Man, it's bothering me. But nevertheless, Richard Nixon, when he finds out the New York Times is going to publish the secrets of Vietnam and some of the maybe things that some people would say were illegal, like bombing Laos and Cambodia without Congress knowing and some other things, and I don't want to say everything's factual in terms of Congress not knowing or knowing, but he definitely didn't want that in the papers. So, what ended up happening is he tried to use prior restraint. This idea that the government has a right to kind of, you know, censor things if it's going to put the country in danger. You know, if I was going to put a list of CIA agents out and I called the Buffalo News and I said, hey, publish the story of CIA agents, you know, they're not going to publish that story. It would put those people's lives in danger and possibly the country. So, this Pentagon Papers case is called New York Times versus um, United States. The United States is trying to stop them from publishing. The New York Times is suing New York Times versus United States. And this is a success for freedom of, of press. Um, the New York Times wins that court case and publishes the secrets of Vietnam. And uh, Richard Nixon is kind of smeared by this in a sense. And really, um, in a lot of historians' eyes, becomes very guarded against the press and what he sees as a conspiracy out to get him, the President of the United States. Um, so he had begun recording everything that went on in the White House, um, maybe as a preventive measure, maybe to use to, uh, you know, remember I have this on tape. I don't know the reasoning of why uh, Richard Nixon did this. Um, you know, he, he did have um, problems in previous elections. You know, he lost to JFK by, like, this much. Many people, not many people, some people. I don't even want to say some people. I sound like one of those newscasters, some people say. Um, but there's definitely an idea out there that uh, that election was tilted toward JFK using the mob in Illinois. Um, and I'm not going to get into that, but Nixon was, was probably pissed. And in 68, when he beat Humphrey, LBJ didn't run. Um, he won by like this much again. So some people say by 1972, he wasn't going to lose again. So he's kind of in this mode of not trusting people and recording conversations and the Pentagon Papers are coming out and the Vietnam War is going bad. And, uh, you know, all this stuff's kind of piling on. So another event occurred during this time period, right before 1972, which is going to lead to this scandal. It is the scandal. Um, Nixon had a special group of people who helped him like run his election. Uh, the nickname or anagram for them is Creep, the Committee to Re-Elect the President. The President. And uh, Gordon Liddy and uh, what's that other guy's name? I, uh, um, anyway, uh, this group, basically what they did was uh, they broke into a hotel, the Watergate Hotel, where the Democratic National um, Committee was, or there were offices with Democratic papers, and George McGovern papers and the vice president um, nominees papers and basically they burglarized um, and they got caught they got arrested 
And I'm talking about like gangster style, like with masks and in the middle of the night and flashlights and you know tape on the lock. And they, they burglarized and they got arrested for this. Well, later down the road, well, first of all, Richard Nixon wins in 1972. It's like the Yankees versus the Bad News Bears. McGovern was kind of labeled, and this is AP material, by the way, um, the Democratic nominee is being too liberal, kind of like a hippie, like he smoked dope and, uh, you know, listened to Jimi Hendrix and, uh, you know, peace everywhere, and he wasn't going to be strong and yada, yada, yada. Nixon pounced him, uh, pounced. It's like an electoral landslide. There's not too many electoral landslides. Um, kind of 1980, 84, um, when Reagan won. But definitely, 72 is a pouncing. And um, after he had won again, and he was probably you know going into his mode of uh, doing what he did, he's later going to open up FBI um, files on John Lennon, um, on other um, historical figures that you might recognize, civil rights leaders and um, hippies, and um, crazy, crazy stuff back then that um, I was only one, so I don't remember. But nevertheless, let's move on. Um, these people that did the burglary, eventually someone recognizes one of their names at like an arraignment or in the trial or something, and it starts to associate it with the White House, that these people came from the White House, or at least they worked or were paid by the White House. So, of course, what do Americans begin to think? Did the president know? Did the president do it? No. What's the president got to say? And Nixon immediately, I, I don't know anything, I wasn't involved, um, they had nothing to do with me, and really begins a, 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 a trail of denials. Um, and eventually Congress begins to investigate. And now Democrats are getting elected to Congress. I mean, the Vietnam War was going bad, and uh, now Democrats start you know, having some power in Congress, and they're going to investigate the president. That's their job. Remember, congressional oversight, that's the check and balance being able to investigate the president, see you know, what's going on. That's their job as a separate power in our government. And they do that. And eventually at one of the hearings, somebody let it slip. He's got tapes. Tapes? Well, if we listen to the tapes, then all of this ridiculous fighting about whether he knew or not would be solved. So President Nixon, we're Congress, an equal branch of government. You know, we subpoena the tapes, give us the tapes. And Nixon says, and I'm going to try to imitate him and do a horrible job, and please don't quote me. I'm the President of the United States, and I don't have to give you the tapes. Why? Because I'm the President. It's really kind of a I'm above the law kind of idea. And he used national security reasons, and maybe they're legitimate. I'm not saying they're not legitimate reasons, but in most Americans' eyes, you know, it, it looks like he's trying to avoid getting caught. So eventually, very famous Supreme Court case, you got it, U.S. versus Nixon. How about that? The country versus the president. That's got to be a democracy, a constitutional one. So um, there's nine justices. They're going to activate judicial review. They're judging not a law, but a presidential action, and they're allowed to do that. And 9-0. It's a pouncing. Maybe it's 8-0, one guy abstained. But it's a shutout. And Nixon loses. When Nixon loses... Then he's got to give over the tapes. Then they're going to listen. Then he's going to get impeached. Then there's going to be a trial in the Senate. And then he's going down and down hard. So that's when he quits and resigns. And uh, I want to say August 74. I'm really bad with the dates, guys. Isn't that terrible for a history teacher? But nevertheless, let's go over the big idea here, the lesson. The big lesson is that no one should be above the law. Saying I'm the president and that's what makes it legal is, is not going to be considered a legitimate constitutional argument anymore. And I don't want to bring in a current event without getting in trouble here, but I'm going to try. I just saw an interview or, with Dr. Rice yesterday. Um, Condoleezza Rice, the Secretary of State and former National Security Advisor for George Bush. And she was asked by um, a student at a college, um, you know, do you believe that torture, uh, waterboarding is torture? And she went on to kind of talk for like, 18 years. But one thing she said, and maybe I'm misthrown in saying this, is she said, basically, I was following orders, and we're under treaty obligation not to torture. So if the president ordered it by law, it's not torture, because we promised not to torture. So if he says it's not torture, it's not torture. And immediately Watergate popped in my head. This idea of saying, look, there's no legal ramifications. I'm the president. I'm above the law. Isn't going to stand water anymore. And now everybody should be judgeable. 
And in the 1990s, Republicans believed that when they went after Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky and Whitewater and we could go into blue dresses and things like that. But man, I want to keep my job. So make sure you get that idea of executive power, right? Sometimes they called Nixon the imperial president because he thought he was such the man. And then we're going to have congressional power rise, the imperial congress. We'll see where we go. Good luck. See ya. Wouldn't want to be you.